Hey, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I'm to say, our show, Big on Jump Scares. Yeah. Uh, episode 20. There's a jump scare. Right? Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. And uh, this week we're going to be talking about a song that was uh, <laughs> a lot of tragedy associated with this song. Uh, <laughs> tragedy and comedy. I've loved these days. Uh, an, a song, beautiful song. Yeah. Alex noted before we started recording, not memorable apparently. Uh, not memorable. I had some uh, very uh, intense personal problems remembering it <laughs> at the absolute worst time. Well, absolute worst time on a Twitch game show. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which I can't get a handle on. Do you? I feel like either twelve people are watching that, or it's like half a million. And I don't because I Twitch. I don't. Well, that means nothing to me. Twitch. Yeah. I am elderly, as you can see. <laughs> I'm I'm aware of three television channels, <laughs> yeah. uh, and a remote control with a wire on it. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I have this uh, this bit I do every now and then um, when I'm on the road, which I'll be on the road again in a few months. It's exciting. Um, uh, where I talk about how uh, uh, I like nostalgia. I like uh -huh. nostalgia. And then I go, hey, you guys remember nostalgia? That's the line I like to find. <laughs> <Boy. laughs> and then I'll go, you guys remember nostalgia, right? Give it a and uh, so I say, but the joke is I always say that you got to be careful about nostalgia, though, because your nostalgia eventually just becomes uh old man talking about thing we don't know what that is because yeah eventually your nostalgia is i don't know what you're talking about sir <laughs> nostalgia only works with uh, other people in your age group yeah and uh, you can't reminisce with kids yeah because there's nobody i'm talking to that i'm like hey uh 20 year olds uh what do you guys think about barney miller so, yeah and then, yeah, you can go down a real rabbit hole ex trying to explain it. And yeah. then you end up uh, embarrassed, possibly yeah. on Twitch. The funny thing, too, is sometimes you'll be with a young friend and you'll decide, hey, well, let's watch something that was on TV when I was a kid. And because they're your friend and they're nice people, they'll like, oh, yeah, sure. So you watch something like Barney Miller that you have fond memories of, and then they're 26 and the whole time you're sitting there you're like oh uh, this didn't seem so homophobic when it was on <laughs> yeah Ooh. i mean you can do it to yourself even i can was I, what was we were watching oh we're like oh gilligan's island is on haven't watched one of those in 35 years right put it on and they were like oh this is not funny at all this is so terrible yeah and a thousand science problems of course um oh it was so bad i was like oh no well we didn't know yeah we just liked uh, when he hit him with the hat yeah and the other thing that's crazy about that show too is like the th i think this might be the thing that bothers me the most when i remember it i'm like uh, <laughs> there, there's more than coconuts in a pie yeah, that's a big problem. You couldn't have made that pie. No, no chance. I And I don't know about pies. Yeah. But I know I can't make one. I know that- Even with all the stuff. Yeah. I know that to make an apple pie, the ingredients aren't seven apples. <laughs> right. That's not the whole thing. Seven apples and sunlight. Yeah, man, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me whip it up. Uh, that that was, I, you're trying to survive on an island. Don't start with pie. Right. Eat something good for you. You start with boars if they're on there. <laughs> they never had boar. Yep. That I recall. How great would that be, though? There's an episode where suddenly Gilligan's eating a pie and he realizes, wait a minute, where'd you get the cream? You got supplies. <laughs> and then it just gets really violent. <laughs> oh, I like it. Reboot. 
So last episode, we talked about this uh, song that you struggled to remember the lyrics to. And then I referenced a movie that I liked that actually sort of captures the era. And you remember yeah. I talked about that? And I said it was the lady on Bosom Buddies. Well, her name is Wendy Jo Sperber. Yes, and, uh, thank you. She was in Bachelor Party. She was in Back to the Future. And she was in a little movie called I Want to Hold Your Hand. And it's uh, yeah. a really good movie. And uh, I did not know it was a made-for-TV movie. It wasn't even a theatrical release. That's a, there's nostalgia for you. Yeah. Made-for-TV movies. Do you remember when they do that? And they were even kind of good sometimes. Yeah. I feel like, wasn't the day after one of those? It was. It was, right? And yep. it was great. Yeah, the day after for those... Uh, too young to remember when the world was chaotic because <laughs> <laughs> we were off we were all afraid of a nuclear winter um and uh now we're just afraid of everything and nuclear winter uh but it was about uh the nuclear holocaust happening and the people who were left to pick up the pieces the day after right and i remember it, and it was harrowing and everyone talked about it and we're all very upset. And now if something like that was on now, it would just be like another show that you watched. Yep. I mean, you know, there's like 10 shows about zombie apocalypses. Yeah. Um, like nuclear doesn't even figure into our worries anymore. Yeah. Everything's a lot more immediate. <laughs> like, no, I'm not afraid of uh, a nuclear winter. I'm afraid of like unwiped groceries a doorknob could take you out. Yeah. Yeah, there so. is even, like, I've even had the thought, but just because that's the way my brain works, I'm like, yeah, the nuclear winter that took everybody out. That'd solve a lot of problems. Yeah, that's all right. Be good for the birds. It's the surviving that sounds terrible. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's always the problem. It's like you have funerals for the living. Hmm. <laughs> right everybody <laughs> uh, well, we have fun welcome to alex and jim are a bummer <laughs> <laughs> episode one billion <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, do we tell the people why uh, why we do uh, this a song and what happened to me um why don't you do a recap for us yeah i feel like i don't know if everybody watches every episode of this. Um, <laughs> I'm on uh, Paul Goebel's little Twitch game show. All, uh, your, favorite game shows. all your favorite game shows. Um, partly accurate title. Um, final round is a trivia question for each player in that player's declared speciality. Yeah. And I had declared that my speciality was Billy Joel lyrics so very i'm like going in got this there's only so many albums he can't trip me up um he asks me uh what song is this lyric from and then he doesn't just give me three words which can be you know oh i need context it was two full lines um from this song that I then sang back, because that's how you get to the title, right? Somebody asked you, hey, what's this from? And you go, oh, uh, sing, sing it, sing it, sing it, and you sing it until you get to the title part, which I think I could have done and was in the process of doing, but it's Paul Goebel, so he keeps talking <laughs> and interrupting you and asking you if you know it. Not that the show is in any hurry. I, if you've watched the show, it's two hours and 15 minutes on a good day. But now he's in a hurry to get my answer because he's got eight other contestants to get to. Um, and so he keeps interrupting me. I can't sing my way to it. I know the lyric, I'm singing, I know the key, I'm, I'm on it. I can't get the title. And I panicked and I just said, uh, Summer Highland Falls. I don't know. <laughs> it was not. Um, 
there's similarities. Uh, and he's like, I've loved these days. And I was like, fuck, I have not listened to that song in a very long time. It is an awkward title. Yeah. It's a weird tense. First, I have loved these days. Yeah. Um, I love these days is a song title. This is how awkward that song title is, is if you're trying to remember it to Google the lyrics, uh, you'll get a hundred other songs first. Yeah. <laughs> it's like calling a song. It's like if the Beatles had a song that was like, I have wanted to hold your hand. We get, we'll get, take all the extra. Why are you? Anyway, I blew it. I didn't win the Twitch game show and whatever uh, prize comes with that. Um, permission to leave, I assume. Um, and so uh, we decided we should look at the song. Yeah. And, why, and see maybe why it didn't stick with me. And weirdly enough, it is about remembering. Yeah. And nostalgia. Um, he recorded it, I guess, in New York after leaving LA. He had gone to LA to seek fame and fortune as a songwriter. Um, turns out it doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. And so he's like, well, I'll go where I know uh, where all the streets are and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so back he went, and this song is about what it was like in LA. I think so. I think so. Sort of. Um, it, we were, we listened to it today, and I thought it was very funny. Um, you can look for this as we go. <laughs> How many things are just like some dumb kid's idea of rich people stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a little off. It doesn't quite know about the things. It's almost like... Uh, I, I cobbled together my knowledge about these situations from uh, TV shows and movies and maybe other songs. <laughs> um, but it, it was very funny to me, it's just symbols. John Mulaney famously said that uh, Donald Trump is like a hobo's idea of a rich guy. Uh, it's like that scene where a hobo wins a bunch of money and then he's in a big bathtub with a soap bubble beard. Right. <laughs> talking about what he's going to do. And all those things are Donald Trump. I'm going to have a gold apartment. And I'm going to marry a model. Yeah. And um, he never got over it. No. At least no, Phil, Phil thinks he's right about that. At least in the hobo movie, there's a there's a scene where he sees a friend of a, a fellow hobo and he realizes, oh, I forgot my friend's down on his luck. I got to help him out. Right. I've lost my hobo roots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get back to, uh, yeah, yeah. But no, he was like, okay, I made it. Burn the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> just me. Uh, I got that fancy, did you get plastic surgery? No, I just had them cut out my empathy. <laughs> you look 20 years younger. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, these days. I listen to this song. I, I'll be honest. I'm sure I've heard this song before, but I'm not positive. It must be. You must have. I would have. I would think so. Although I had an experience where uh, I was looking through the Google at turnstiles the album that this is from and saw a track called all you want to do is dance and i thought i don't know a billy joel song called all you want to do is dance this has to be a typo or a mistake or a cut and paste that went poorly and uh then i listened to it and i was like oh yeah i know that song it's just been <laughs> 20 years since i played turnstiles back to front yeah absolutely and there are uh, even artists that you love. There's only a few artists that manage to create whole albums that are. I would sit down and listen to every single song every time I listen to the album. There's only a few artists right. that are like that. Yeah, you have to listen to the wall. I think like I will only ever listen to the entire album, The Wall. I don't right. like to listen to any song isolated. Yeah, 
That is true. It's like listening to one of Vivaldi's seasons. Right. I'm like, nope, it's got to be the whole thing. Doesn't, it's a package deal. Yeah, it doesn't really do any. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, I find Abbey Road's like that too, particularly side B. For those of kids who remember side B. Uh, I remember side B. <laughs> so nostalgic. Yeah, side because you that's the song where side A is rock and roll and side B is an opera. Um, right. For all intents and purposes. And, uh, and if you, by the way, if you have something like Spotify and you don't know how to work it because you're an old man, sometimes you'll have it and it'll be on shuffle. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Ruins that album. Yeah, shuffle is a real album killer. Yeah. Like, um, oh, so I got that four seconds and then it goes into another song. That's not good. <laughs> anyway, so you picked the song, I think, partly to, to um, a tone. <laughs> a town uh, avenge avenge sure Given your Catholic, Catholic <laughs> uh, I, roots, I was gonna say a tone but avenge works good for catholics too <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah two sides of the same coin and i gotta now say, I, I figure we should just see what the deal is with it yeah and uh i was pleased to say that wow it's a really pretty song it's not uh, it's not dumb yeah it's not um i, I like it it, it feels to me, like this is a little bit of a character, but more just actually, this is uh, an experience Billy Joel had. I True. Think. So I kind of like that. Um, so I, I have a little bit of a thought at the very beginning. So I'll start with the first two lines. All right. Or I guess it's four, the way it's written out, but it feels <laughs> like it. Yeah. Now we take our time so nonchalant and spend our night so bon vivant. The first thing that occurred to me, and you mentioned it, and we'll probably talk about it more, is uh, poor people's idea of rich. Uh, bon vivant is uh, a dumb person's idea of how to sound sophisticated. I'll say yes. bon vivant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they used to in uh, cartoons. Yeah, and it, and it works. Uh, whether he's doing it on purpose or not, and let's give him the benefit of the doubt that he's doing it on purpose, that it works for this guy's particular reminisces, reminiscing, uh, <laughs> to, to say it that way, uh, to fancy up his speech um, as if he's being a little ironic and, and maybe even a little self-aware and making fun of who we were. Yes, I agree with that. And also... Um... That, yeah, that is not even the right part of speech for Bon Vivant. A bon Vivant is a person. Right, true. If you uh, go out and have caviar and sleep with the ladies, you are a Bon Vivant. Yeah. You don't spend your night Bon Vivant <laughs> any more than you would spend your night engineer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it may be just like a little ironic distance yeah yeah years ago there was a girl i knew who was describing herself as a hacker this is oh. a, a long time ago but i knew what a hacker was and i'm like you don't you don't work on computers and she goes that's not what a hacker is a hacker is somebody who just like kind of hacks things off they don't it, everything's not a big deal and i'm like <laughs> that is not what that is no yeah, no. And I think I might be actually kind of mad right now. I should was, she, was she like British? Is it ha, like ha, ha. Oh my God, that you just said that. Ha ha. In <laughs> high school, this is the same girl who, when she came to our high school, pretended to be British. Wow. I well, can't... I respect that. <laughs> Wow, you do have to reinvent yourself when you move. <laughs> was, um, that's fantastic. Yeah, so I started to date her as much as you date anybody in high school. And sure. I was like, oh, I got a British girlfriend. And uh, <laughs> one, uh, one time we're on the phone and she said, I've got something to tell you. And I promise you her accent wasn't much better than that. <laughs> I've got a little secret I've got to tell you. 
<laughs> I said, what? And she goes, I'm not really British. <laughs> like, what? I was like, yeah, when I got to this school and the whole conversation was tough to get through. Yeah. Because like, I was under the impression I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's not like, oh, you're, uh, you deceived me in some way. It's, it's like, oh, you might be full crazy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you're not British, that's probably fine. In high school, you're like, oh, okay, I'll make the adjustment. But you're crazy. Yeah. Now, oh, even if, in high school, that's tough to handle crazy. If there are any high school kids who happen to love our show and listen, um, wow. I have a, oh, I just thought of something that would be, I, I would go back in time just to do this. I would completely waste the opportunity. If I could go back in time, I would have young Jim go to high school, tell people he was British, right? Wow. And act British for like two months what? and then do the big reveal and say, I got to tell you guys something. I'm not British. I'm actually Irish. And then for two more months, <laughs> oh, hey, sorry to tell you, he was British. The whole time I was Irish. <laughs> and then two months in, I'd be working on my Scottish accent. <laughs> It'd be very hard to keep it straight. Make yep. sure you don't go to school and accidentally drop some Scottish. That's right. And now towards yeah. the end of the semester, at graduation, people would go, it's crazy to find out that Jim was actually Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> and I never clear it up. I never clear it up. And this whole time you're doing homework and stuff too? Yep. Yeah. This yeah. Is quite a course load. Yeah, I'm spending a lot on clothes because I'm trying to do appropriate clothes <laughs> where I'm fine. How about an Irish guy dress for Halloween? <laughs> you talk about the troubles a lot. <laughs> oh. Here's the other idea I had if I could tell my young self to do this. At the age of 20, you start wearing a wig. That looks exactly like your hair. Like you could have done this. This would have been great. If Alex at 20 years old, he starts wearing a wig that looks like Alex's hair. You don't yeah. take it off till now. <laughs> till right now. And then go, people go, what happened? And you go, you go, I saw a ghost. <laughs> Pretty yeah. good idea, right? That's a good 40 year prank. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it better fucking pay off. Yeah. Except yeah. after 40 years of wearing a wig, I would take it off and just like, it would be dust and scabs. <laughs> <laughs> I assume I'm sleeping in the wig. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking. Like Sue know. Sue has to think you got this great hair. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, she does think I have great hair. Well, you uh, yeah, I, have, I have 20 years to go on my prank. <laughs> I started a, a different thing. Um, when I was teaching high school in Yuma, Arizona, I had a student who uh, was a, like a sassy girl, uh, sophomore, I think, who tried to convince me that she really was an FBI agent who had been embedded at the school to catch drug dealers. And she was really 26. And that meant that we could date if we wanted to. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was not. Luckily, I was not fooled. Yeah. Oh, wow. And luckily, you're not, you weren't the kind of skeeve to go, well, I'm going to pretend to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> right. She said. <laughs> I feel like that hardly ever works for those people. The different kind of, the different kind of lies, and then we'll go back to lyrics, but the different kind of lies people tell in high school. So this girl said she was British and then there were other people who told some different version of a lie or whatever and then you had to be polite about it I guess because you weren't an adult yet and didn't know you could just tell them hey why don't you stop lying to me you couldn't do that right. which is what you should do um and, you know because she also was the girl who later on said she had split personalities and she acted like another person and now, of course, if we were smart, we'd have realized, okay, well, that's not true, but something's wrong. We should have realized it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Getting yeah. warmer. Yeah. Instead of just like, oh, I can't believe she tricked me with that. Well, never again. Oh, suicide <laughs> note. 
you know, whatever. <laughs> he didn't. That's just a joke. But cut her down. There was this other kid who I guess he wanted to get in on the lion craze. <laughs> And he said to me, we were at a picnic, and I'll never forget this. There were there's an ambulance in the distance, and he goes, Ah, oh, Jim, I gotta tell you something. I gotta leave near that ambulance because there's a fire or something, and I gotta go take care of it. I was like, Okay. And he goes, Because I'm Superman. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Always keep it believable. I was like, and so many things went through my head. I was like, do you think, how dumb do you think I am? <laughs> Hugely insulting to you. you. Also, Superman famously never tells anybody yeah. that he's Superman. So I go, well, you better get going, man. <laughs> <laughs> So you're just gonna walk, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Faster if you flew there, but you're a Superman. You know you got long, you got short sleeve. Um, you got a short sleeve shirt on right now. <laughs> None of this works. That's fantastic. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, uh, okay, this will be the capper to that story, real quick. <laughs> went to Tucson. Went to Tucson years later to do a stand-up show. Uh -huh. and invited a bunch of friends to come see me, old friends. My family was going to be there, and my sister was going to be there. It's bad lighting, but that's fine. I see my sister out in the audience watching the show. Afterwards, I go to say hello to my sister. Yeah. Get close to her, and I realize it's not my sister. It's my first girlfriend. Oh. And I go, uh. So I didn't want proof that I'm attracted to women that look like my family. Ah. <laughs> yeah, nobody needs that. I need to see a doctor. <laughs> God damn it. Well, it could be one step worse. So you did good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very upsetting. That is upsetting. <laughs> All right, you're up. Uh, okay, we got two lines into it. Uh, we dress our days in silken robes. The money comes, the money goes. We know it's all a passing phase. I'm so sleepy. I like that. Well, I what don't. are your thoughts overall? Um, it's again more symbols of wealth that be silken robes. Uh, yeah. the assumption that rich people walk around in silk robes. Right. <laughs> the money comes, the money goes. We know it's all a passing phase. I like. Um, he's not busy. Yeah. I I thought after listening to this, I was like, oh, I'll bet this is like after. The previous album did, probably didn't do that great. Then there was like downtime before he's working on another album and they're just probably like partying and laying around in LA, which you can do in LA. You can easily lose track of time because the leaves don't change color. Yeah. And you can be there and be like, oh, it's 74 degrees and it has been for 10 years and I wasted my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, time can really get away from you there. Oh, for sure. I remember moving here and being poor, but having an apartment with a pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you care? Why try? Yeah. You already made it. You're poor, dirt poor. Uh, where'd you go today? The beach. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yep. Absolutely. I like money comes, money goes too. Cause I think, I wonder if this was when he was first realizing he wasn't good with money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, There's a pissing it away quality to that lyric that is very Billy Joel, very yeah, on brand. Very on brand. And, you know, that's what happens when you're out uh, silk robe shopping. <laughs> it's funny, too, because Billy Joel is not alone in being a rocker who pissed away money, but 
other rockers pissed it away at least on themselves getting things he <laughs> right. constantly got ripped off yeah it was just like oh i had some money here what happened yeah he's not oh, like i took it yeah he's not michael jackson there's not like a billy joel zoo where he has weird animals right where you can just sort of sell things back and then you'll have your money again nope nope <laughs> Dirty relatives. <laughs> Dirty relatives and uh, ex-wives, like things that are not fun to finance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's weird how I, I guess wives, if you if you get divorced, are a little bit like cars because their upfront value is a lot, and you're paying a shit ton on the back end. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Man, that's a good opener for just the worst. Sexy if you comic. or the next time you go on like Jack Parr, right? You can use that. <laughs> or if you get a job writing for the Lockhorns. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, who's how do I submit to to get on the Lockhorns? I think you have to take you have to write up a packet and then you uh, dump it in a grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to forge ahead a little bit. Oh. We light our lamps for atmosphere and hang our hopes on chandeliers, symbol of wealth. Yep. We're going wrong. We're gaining weight. We're sleeping long and far too late. And so it's time to change our ways, at least that he knows. Yeah. But I've loved these days. I mean, it's a little better self-reflection than he has sometimes. Yeah. He's like, we're doing this, but it's not a great idea and we should change it, but it's been great. I like that part. I like the, well, nostalgia. I like the part where he's, he's realistically looking at it and going, this was a lot of fun. Like, I have a lot of memories of Chicago like that. Like it's, it was a blast, but I certainly don't need to be doing that anymore. Right nor could my physical body handle it. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep uh, plugging away so that, uh, you know, Sue don't get mad at you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, as we indulge in things refined, we hide our hearts from harder times. A string of pearls. <laughs> uh -huh. Sure. A foreign car. <laughs> that, that used to be a fancy thing. That's so great that you mentioned that ahead of time because now it just makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can only go so far on caviar and Cabernet. Wow. It's quite a list. Yeah. Um, it's very funny to me that, you know, there was a time in this country, young children, that if you had a foreign car, that meant it was expensive and fancy. And if oh, you had yeah. an American car, it was good and it worked and stuff. Um, and it, I feel like we were kids when it sort of changed. Yeah. And everybody had like a Datsun <laughs> or a Toyota or a, like that was new. Yep. There weren't always like Japanese cars around. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them were hilarious to make fun of because they were all sort of the same thing, which is they were model models of cars that were adapted from meeting the needs of a Japanese consumer and trying to meet the needs of an American consumer, but not really doing it. You know, like, cause we had the Datsun B210. Oh, nice. I believe this now a Nissan, right? That Datsun became Nissan, right? Isn't that what happened? Yes, that is correct. And it was like, you know, honestly, like driving around on the lawnmower. It was just... <laughs> yeah. The B210 Sundowner? Is that what that was called? Or... I, I just remember it being called the B210 and that my version of it, the door was tied together. With <laughs> I feel like I remember the rope. Yeah. I do remember the rope. Was it like a mustard colored car? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a safe guess because almost everything was. Yeah. I lived in that in for a while. Nice work. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you now, bud. Right. 
Not living right? in Paradise would be too tragic. <laughs> um, I do like that lyric. Um, I don't know, but you're right. Foreign cars are not foreign cars. You could just say, "I have a car now." <laughs> right. Yeah, your car is at least partly foreign, no matter what you have. Yeah. At this point. Um, but it's very funny that that really pegs this song in time. String of Pearls, too, by the way, isn't an affectation of anybody rich anymore anyway. It's an old lady thing now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Old ladies are super conservative ladies. Yeah. And I don't uh, even know if they wear them in real life anymore anyway, either. I don't know. I feel like it, every lady probably has one. Yeah. And you just don't really ever wear it. And they're like, I'll give this to my kid someday. Yeah. And so she can hate it. <laughs> yeah, literally, the yeah. only time I hear String of Pearls today is the euphemism. I don't right. hear a real thing. Yeah, no, you don't. It's very much like um, from the Honeymooners. <laughs> yeah. Or like old TV shows, they'd be trying to find money to get a string of pearls for their wife for the anniversary. Right. And then they'd fuck up and lose the money. Like, oh, they told me my scheme would work, but it didn't. But she still loves him. Because what's she going to do? Get remarried at 40? Yeah, exactly. Who else is she going to find to hit her? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny, but it is funny. It is fun. The hitting is not funny. Hitting, yeah. It's very yeah. important. Kids. Pull your foreign car to the side of the road for a minute. <laughs> um, also, uh, caviar and Cabernet uh, don't go together. Oh, do they not? No, caviar goes with its champagne. Oh, yeah, you're right. Caviar and Cabernet. So but they sound great in a line together. Yeah. Unless he's saying, and he's not, but unless he's saying, we think we know what we're doing, but we don't. But he's not saying it, so he's just yeah. right. But he, what he is doing is uh, using a lot of French words. Yeah. Because they sound fancy. Nonchalant, bon vivant, there's a chandelier, yeah. cabernet. Um, it's, <laughs> it is very funny cartoon wealth. <laughs> yeah, it's we definitely can't. fine. You do that you're doing this a lot even though you don't know what you're doing you're swirling it around <laughs> right i've seen people do this you're, you're you know you're smelling it you're like it smells like wine but uh, whatever. right yeah like well, whenever, well, I, well, okay. whenever i go play pool i always chalk it up i, I don't know what that's for <laughs> but you got to do it yeah do you know what that's for it's for uh uh friction oh okay yeah Otherwise, it slides off the cue ball a little too easily. Oh, so okay. it, it, it seems like it's powder, but it's really, uh, it's, uh, it grips better. OK. It seems it's counterintuitive. Yep. I literally yeah. am only ever doing it because I'm like, I mean, I see the guy in the movie does the thing, so I'm going to do the thing. I feel like uh, we're living a good chunk of our lives doing that. <laughs> Somebody on TV did this. So I guess I, I'll also wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite TV character wears pants. Before that, nobody wore pants. <laughs> yeah, kids watching this. Uh, we were all nude until eighth grade. <laughs> um, we drown our doubts in dry champagne and soothe our souls with fine cocaine. Which makes me think he didn't ever do cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> that is not what it does. Uh, it makes your soul feel like uh, there's an electrical fire. Yeah. Uh, um, you might die. I need to take the edge off. Give me a little cocaine. Yeah. Let me, let me soothe my soul. Listen, I'm about to go into my yoga class. Do you have a big fat rail? Snort <laughs> up. <laughs> Just to get loose. <laughs> um, but it sounded, it's expensive, so I'll give them that. Yeah. Also, these are the two lines I was given and failed to appreciate on uh, all your favorite game shows. We drown our doubts in dry champagne and soothe our souls with fine cocaine. And then I went, 
I don't know why I even care. Is it, is it, and Paul went, well, what's your answer? <laughs> My shirt is dumb. Uh, I like, uh, um, <laughs> that's awesome. I like we drown <laughs> our doubts. I like we drown our doubts. I like that line. Yeah, usually you drown your sorrows. Yeah. So it's a nice uh, switch up. Yeah, and it makes so much sense. Yeah, because it, it is more accurate than drowning your sorrows. Because if you're ever sad and then you drink, what do you get? More sad. Yeah. But if you have doubts and you drink, yeah. they drown. Your doubts drown. And now you're very, very sure yeah. that you can sing this song. And it makes uh, it makes a lot of sense to pick champagne. I like that too. We drown our doubts in dry champagne. Well, there's the the theme of all this rich nonsense. Hey, I got champagne. I must be a success. Right, right. I must know what I'm doing. Where, where, how else could I have gotten this champagne? It's true. And now I got to calm down. Who's got cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's bring it all down a little bit. Guys, we're all going to go inside, start wrapping it up. I'm going to do a bunch of Coke and uh, play some acoustic guitar for you. <laughs> we'll do some, <laughs> cook some cocaine and I just could get to bed early. Yeah, it's a fresh start. You know, so let's all have some cocaine and then get to bed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. I don't know why I even care. We'll get so high and get nowhere. We'll have to change our jaded ways, but I've loved these days. Yeah. I do like that it, he's being nostalgic, but it's clearly just ending. Yeah. So he's not looking way back. Yeah. This is like September. And he's, um, well, it's been a great summer. <laughs> Uh, see you in class. Yeah. It does feel like that end of summer vibe. Yeah, agreed. And uh, you're probably right. It was for a working person an end of summer because he had, he, you're probably right. He had made an album that did well, even if it, and he wasn't ready to write a new album. How many, every damn biopic, there's that period of time. Right. Every yeah, band usually I they and during that period of time they like get a big house somewhere and just people are over all the time. Yeah, <laughs> doing drugs and whatnot. And the house was supposed to be where they made the album, but it was just it didn't work out. And now they're they're coming to take the house back. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! All right, I guess we go back to the New York studio. <laughs> yeah, it is very like. Uh, Act two biopic. Yeah. <laughs> before they make the real good album. <laughs> yeah. So before we end and then begin, I uh, like that lyric. That's great. That's very that very concise. I pretty much know exactly what it means. Before we end and then begin doing real stuff. <laughs> yeah. We'll drink a toast to how it's been. A few more hours to come to be complete. Nights <laughs> <laughs> on satin sheets. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, hey, Alex, how much money you think I got? I got satin sheets money. I'll tell you that much. Satin sheets money. Yeah. Well, shit. Get out the champagne. <laughs> Get out this and garçon. Bring me your finest cocaine. <laughs> I feel like this. He spent the summer living yeah. with uh, Larry from Three's Company. <laughs> oh, oh. I got two stewardesses coming over. Uh, <laughs> I gotta wash my satin sheets. Oh, a few more oh. times that I can say, love these days. Nice. It's not the usual. I mean, I think of like the thesis sentence of most of his songs is like, I know what's going on and I'm smart and you idiot don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> this is very much like, um, well, I'm very self-aware. <laughs> um, I, I think a lot of the imagery is supposed to be like, that's what LA is like. 
champagne and chandeliers and yeah. cocaine. There's no mention of New York, but elsewhere on the album, um, there's a lot about how great it is to be back in New York and how great New York is. You know what? In LA kind of is that. It kind of is. It never changed much. Can I tell you, so there was the cocaine scene, right? That was very much an LA thing. Yeah. And a friend of mine, who I'm not going to say their name because that would be not appropriate for this example, but a friend of mine was dating this lady and they broke up because she went nuts because oh. she was hanging out at the improv and the cocaine scene what either never left or just everybody started it up again and uh this was within that was just before the pandemic this ain't a while ago <laughs> yeah the cocaine scene scene was cranking yeah i think the only thing that went away was like public party acceptance of cocaine like yeah. i think in the 70s you walked into the party and went, hey, everybody, I brought cocaine. <laughs> and they went, great, I'll move the fondue and let's get to it. <laughs> and now if you do that, people are like, oh man, that's sad, you're gross. Are you an addict? Get out of the house. Yeah. So you, just, you still bring your cocaine, you just don't tell anybody until you think they might be also sad and weird. Right. And then you go, hey, come here, <laughs> you seem broken. Would you like some of my cocaine? And then at the end of the night, everybody's doing cocaine and hating themselves. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, it, I don't think it ever went away. Do you think the party thing is the same thing will happen to you if you're the guy who brings the fondue pot? You're like, hey, guys, I brought the fondue pot. Oh, come on. Gary. Yeah. Come on, bud. Just you need to go to some group that explains you don't need to be eating that much cheese. <laughs> You'll find out yourself the next morning. <laughs> now that, by the way, is true. This is an observation I have. Um, when you're in your 50s, there is a new drug I do in my 50s that will give you the craziest high. And it's a little bit of ice cream late at night. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm familiar with uh, a, a version. Um, I, I used to, in my life, eat a giant bowl of cereal every night. And it always went great. And then I did it. I sort of stopped. And then I did it a few months ago. I had a huge bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios with milk. And then the next morning, according to my silhouette, I was six months pregnant. <laughs> It turned out to, I took the test, negative. Oh, good. Um, and it turned out to be uh, a traffic jam of farts. <laughs> that was not moving. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Yeah, it was real cool. <laughs> the revelation in your... Uh... And the worst thing is when something like that happens is you go into the kitchen and you're like, oh, I still have half a box. So you do it again that night. You're not smart, oh. um, but you know, I've, lo I've loved these days. But I've loved these days. Oh. We drown our sorrows with honey nuts. <laughs> it's so good. It's the best tasting cereal. If I'm looking for the rhyme, what is it for our band? We drown our sorrows in honey nuts. <laughs> and soothe our souls. Oh, yeah, I got nothing. Coconut? I don't know. The coconut. Why not? That's as good. That's, a, as... that's just the thing I won't eat. Yeah. Probably you could. could. Yeah. Do you don't like coconut ever? No, never. Fair. Always bad. Yeah, I used to hate coconut, but that was because I'd never had a fresh coconut. And then uh, in Thai food, it's really good, but you have to. Learn. All right. Yeah. But I'm not yeah. saying you yeah. have to. <laughs> See, this is maturity. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy you enjoy it. I don't want any. Yeah. We're still friends. Exactly. There's not some weird argument like Jim won't shut up about coconut now. I'm some kind of fucking coconut freak. I'm supposed to keep doing this weird podcast with him, <laughs> even though he's pro co. Yeah, I have a buddy who is always like he runs. Uh, what is that 
dumb thing people who are in too good a shape are doing. Oh, CrossFit. Yeah, he does. He runs CrossFit. First of all, I know you just want me to pay you $30. Just ask for $30. Yeah. I might even pay you $30 to shut your mouth. But I'm not going to get into CrossFit. No. Because you know what I don't need? I'm like, oh, I'm in a little better shape here, but also my knee is getting replaced with a plastic one. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This is, we should not be starting anything. Right? (laughs) This is, the starting days are over. Yeah. We can continue stuff. Yeah. For a while. I have a friend who, um, started riding a motorcycle he's my age he started riding a motorcycle and i said to him i said well at least i know how i'm going to answer the question how you died (laughs) you don't start riding a motorcycle when you're 50. no at best you stop riding one yeah um one of the first things that goes as you get older, besides your knees and your hearing, is your balance. Yeah. Um, which I'm learning in my yoga, which I started <laughs> in my 50s, which I probably shouldn't have. If you did, if the stretch and burn, all, yeah, don't do the hot yoga. Yeah, the stretching's okay, but it turns out uh, there's more to it than that. Yeah. Yeah. My brother has been riding a motorcycle since he was probably 15. And he specifically said to me at some point, I was like, I was semi thinking about riding a motorcycle. My brother, who supports anything I want to do, is like, no. (laughs) He goes, you're just going to fall. And the problem is your body won't fall right now. It won't fall correctly. No. So you'll just, you'll be all jacked up. And even if you fall correctly, you're going to take longer to heal because you're not. Yeah, we don't we don't have a correctly anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the correct way for us to fall is into pillows. <laughs> speaking and plenty of, of them. Speaking of motorcycles. Speaking of motorcycles, now I don't know what kind of motorcycle that is, that but it probably helpful. doesn't matter. Would that it be would, helpful? It would be helpful, which is a hint. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Would be helpful to know. What kind of motorcycle that is? We're okay. I see. There's an old west scenario. Yeah. It's yep. a six shooter. So six. Just, I'll just say, forget about the six shooter. But the old is important. Yeah. It's an old Indian. Is it an Indian? Because that would be something. No. Um, <laughs> it's an old motorcycle. It is an old motorcycle, and uh, it ain't as good as it used to be. It's a a worn-out Harley. It is a Harley Davidson. It is, but it is a very specific Harley Davidson. Oh, there's a specific Harley, like a shovel head? It is. That's the kind of motorcycle it is. Oh, man. Wow. You got I, the, you got it, kind of. You're almost there. I got it. I don't know where Shovelhead lives. I feel like there was a song called House of Blue Light that mentioned. Boom! You did it. Did I do it? You did it. House of Blue Light. Not on any album. Billy Joel, My Lives. It's a full uh, B-side. Yeah, well, I'm driving on down to the Surfside Bar. These days, my old shovel head, she don't travel far. Wow. Good job. You pulled that okay. out. That's a tough one. Yeah. You're trying to trick me. I should have talked more relentlessly while you were trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, put on a Hawaiian shirt and yammer. <laughs> <laughs> that always works. <laughs> uh, he doesn't watch this show, right? You know. Who, who the fuck I knows? Don't. He is not right. It's not on Nick at night, so we're probably safe. Yeah, so as long as he Bruno doesn't tell him about it, we're fine. <laughs> right, that's right. Our number one fan. Yeah, he really knows Bruno Mars loves our show. It's true. <laughs> uh, I got a trivia question. I would love a trivia question. I feel like it might be an easy one. But there is only, to my knowledge, one song on one album 
in which the F word drops. Here's what's funny. I just looked at the lyrics to that song. Why did you do that? Because uh, what I'll do is I'll go on a hunt for what I think would be a fun picture to have. Oh, sure, of course. Pick out a good lyric. And sometimes I'll come, uh, sometimes I'll have an idea and it's, I'm like, yeah, this is barely a hint. This isn't fair. And then, and then I really like the lyric. I like the imagery of old shovel head, which is what. Sure. Like, cause it's so specific. It's not my old Harley. It's my old shovel head. I'm like, oh, I like that. Great. And I didn't know what one was. I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay. So it's a specific. So I saw this damn song where he drops the F word. And you know what? I'm so bad at trivia. I still don't know what it was. <laughs> you forgot. Yeah. Um, it is, the song is called Laura. That's right. Okay. Um, which uh, oddly enough was written about his mother. Ah, that's where he drops the bomb. <laughs> the one F bomb is the song about his mom. So, which I, Fully understand. <laughs> Makes a thousand percent sense to me. Uh, and is a great song. Yeah. Wow. That's that's a cool. That's, uh, sometimes I just got to go, oh, brain, come on. You just look. Yeah. We were talking about this earlier today. Um, Sue has a problem retrieving information. Uh, we all do. Uh, Seems a little more pronounced, maybe. I don't know why. <laughs> but we were saying, like, the truth of that matter is that we have always had that. And we are just scared now of being old, so we notice it. But neither one of us could remember shit in our 20s either. That's true. That's absolutely true. And yeah. I had that conversation with my wife because I had... And what's her name? Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I had a thing where I thought I had just had verbal aphasia because I said um, I need you to put on your seatbelt and all right yeah get your seatbelt I was like and I said it's a get the door instead and clearly the door was already closed <laughs> um, and then I was like oh that's verbal aphasia and then I thought that's probably not verbal aphasia I think I just always did that yeah I've always done that and now I'm yeah if you're absolutely right I'm just concerned now. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Yeah. Everything uh, has symptom potential. Uh, every time I drink too much, I, I throw up. Well, something's wrong, doc. <laughs> I have done a thing where I'm like, uh, I'll be at work and uh, going to the bathroom to pee. And I'll be like, this is like the fourth time I peed today. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's like, of course, yeah, you always peed all the time. Yeah. And every, as long as it comes out, and it's not a weird color, you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and then some days I'm like, well, I, don't, I peed a lot more yesterday than today. Oh, I don't know. I better start calling my old friends. <laughs> Tell them how I really feel. Yeah. Uh, the worst is that I'll die, from, I'll get hit by like a motorcycle instead of dying of PP cancer. Somebody driving some old shovel head. Yep. Oh, we're in full circle. Um, so I picked a song because I'm supposed to um, and uh, this is not one of my favorite Billy Joel songs but I like this song All right, and, and it's a song I think I've come around to liking more than I did initially and it is I Go to Extremes oh interesting I remember very much hating that song when it came out yeah um, MTV's fault, I think. They played that video a lot. It's not great. I don't think he ever had a good video. Yeah. Um, I go to extremes. Interesting. And, and did you have the same sort of experience where over time you were like, oh, that ain't too bad? It's, I mean, it's objectively fine. <laughs> I don't know why it upset me so much. I, I now have to go listen to it and see what my elderly self thinks of it. Do you think, so sometimes there'll be a band and we'll use Billy Joel in this case, of course, because we're talking about Billy Joel, but this will happen with lots of bands. Do you think it's because 
if at the time you were a fan locked into how you think Billy Joel should sound, because this song isn't, doesn't sound very Billy Joel and not in the way that like, oh, he's doing a stylistic thing. More no. like this feels like other sort of pop music of the day, not Billy yeah. Joel. I had that, yes, that happened when uh, Matter of Trust came out. And I was like, what is this guitar shit? Yeah. You're a piano guy. Yeah. Um, and then I came around on that one. I'm going to have to check in on this one and see how I feel. Cool. Oh, I, I think I picked a good one. All right, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, good job, everybody who listened. Um, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I appreciate the... Uh, uh, messages about Alex's struggles on the Paul Goble show. That was really funny to me. That I you got try it. it. You go on that show. <laughs> yeah. I think anybody can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that is really accurate. That is really accurate. Should we? We should give out his email address <laughs> to interested fans. Yeah, I think it's still Paul at the King of TV dot com. That sounds right. Yeah. And uh, he's still the king of TV, as long as your TV has uh, rabbit ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good joke. It's not his fault. Yeah. They just made more TV than he could handle. Yeah. I'm going to remember that joke when I have to introduce him sometime. That's, <laughs> right. that's a pretty good diss. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great thing. I won't remember the Billy Joel trivia, but I'll remember a good diss. <laughs> That's all you need, buddy. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Next week, I will yell the number 21 at you. Great.